people who have witnessed a there's not going to be a wedding moment following a bachelor bachelorette party what went down story one hi there part-time wedding planner here i have a few of these one obligatory close relationship one the bachelor party and the bachelorette party were being held in the same hotel in new orleans i tried to get them to do separate venues but no the group discount would cover an extra day in carmel they begin at 8 p.m and collide drunkenly at about 3 a.m. It was some kind of drunken fist fight come orgy, and everyone was so ashamed the next morning they called it off. Good news, everyone. They made up six months later and got married. They picked something simple, like their backyard this time. Two flipping weird close relationship one. Bachelorette party turned out to be Homestuck themed, complete with Homestuck male strippers. Please, for the love of Christ, do not ask where I found those. It got weird, and the groom walked in on the bride riding a candy corn colored horn. Groom nope the fudge out. 3. The best one. So the couple has been sleeping together for a few years. She gets pregnant and decide to get married. Months of planning go by and she begins to show. Bride's parents wig right the fudge out, call her a worker, and forbid her to get married. They cancel the wedding, steal her parents' car to elope, and torch the garage on their way out. It was magnificent. I did not get paid. Story 2. Friend of mine had a bachelor party at the local strip club two days before the wedding. I was going to come later in the evening as I was flying in late for the bachelor party and wedding. Got a call right before takeoff that the groom had fallen from the upstairs in the VIP section and they believed had severed his spinal cord. Turns out he had severed his spinal cord and after a few months of rehab was fully paraplegic. Amazingly, the wedding did happen almost a year later. It puts things in perspective that she still stayed. Story 3. I used to work at an upscale wedding venue. Two weeks before a huge, expensive wedding, the groom's father passes away so they ask us to turn the wedding into a funeral instead. They were a lovely couple, and it was really awfully sad when it happened. But I still use it as my go-to answer for describe a time when you delivered outstanding customer service type questions in job interviews. Sorry. Story 4. Several years ago, I got a phone call from the maid of honor for a wedding I was going to attend, as a guest, two weeks hence. She was flustered, but managed to get out. There's no wedding. Groom called it off. He's in love with someone else. Well, I didn't press. I was friends with both, so I knew that the full details would eventually make their way back to me. Oh, and boy did they... Turns out, a couple weeks before the wedding, groom called bride and said he was coming over. They needed to talk. When he got to her apartment, he broke down in tears and confessed that he was in love with someone else. He loved her, but couldn't marry her because he didn't love her in the way a bride deserves. There was much crying and shouting over it all, but eventually, the bride recovered from the news enough to ask him who he was in love with. Well, groom said... It's bride's brother. The wedding was definitely off at that point. Now, five or six years later, groom and bride's brother are married and happy. Though I lost contact with bride shortly after her wedding plans went ball up. So I'm not sure if she ever forgave the boys for that one. Story five. Not bachelor party related, but close. Girl was set to marry guy. The week leading up to the wedding, guy gets busted in a child prostitution ring. He said he didn't know she was underage and that he was under a lot of stress due to the wedding. Girl didn't buy the BS. Needless to say, wedding was off. Story 6. After the wedding at the reception, the newlyweds took forever to show up. They were nearly an hour late. When they did arrive, they were arguing loudly the entire time. They got introduced, and we all clapped as per tradition, and they sat down at the main table in a huff. Sometime between the appetizer and the main course, the argument started again. The groom stormed off, and my girlfriend and I were nosy, so we went to see what was up. He ended up in the hotel lobby on his cell phone. We thought nothing of it, and we were about to go back when the wife shows up still obviously in her wedding dress and continues to ream him out. Now for the first time we can hear what the argument is about. He had invited his ex to the wedding. She showed up to the ceremony and that threw the bride off. Apparently, also, he had cheated on the new wife with the ex-girlfriend several times, with the last time being only about a month prior to the wedding. Additionally, the ex-girlfriend mistress was on her way to come pick up the new husband to take him away from the new bride because she was acting crazy, according to the groom. After a couple minutes of watching this train wreck of an argument, a poor rust bucket sedan shows up with the ex-girlfriend in it. The groom gets into the car with his ex or whatever the fudge she is, and they drive off. Last words went to the bride, though, who screamed at him as he tore off, Well, I guess I'm going to go back to flipping your brother then, you unpleasant person. So, they're no longer married now. Story 7. My cousin runs a popular upscale marriage venue and always tells the story way better than this. So here is a rough overview. The groom's mom was a heavy drinker and got belligerent when she drank so understandably, the bride wanted the groom to try to limit her drinking. The afternoon before the wedding, the bride arrives to see groom's mom smashed with the groom himself, giving her beers. Next thing my cousin knows, 
She was there to oversee preparations. The bride and groom are in a straight-up fist fight, which leads to an anchorman-style street fight between members of both families in the parking lot. Apparently, they recently scheduled a new day for it. I can't imagine the tension there. Story 8. Friend invites me to his wedding. He and fiancé are fairly poor, have lived together for years. They're both semi-disabled. His is PTSD, hers is physical, and on fixed incomes and live in a somewhat expensive area. They have three gift registries, Target, Macy's, Crate Barrel, and a huge invite list. Over 300 friends' family members. All the stuff on the registries is standard stuff like towels, coffee cups, flatware, etc. Anyway, people fly out, get ready for wedding, two days before wedding is bachelor party, and friend gets drunk and admits that she's not really his fiancé. They are just roommates and they have no intention of getting married. They just needed the stuff. They're going to cancel the wedding tomorrow and keep all the gifts. Had to protect him from getting his peach kicked by about two dozen people. Then had to have the fiancé come clean to everyone since he was too hungover. They ended up returning most of the gifts to people. But a surprising number of people let them keep the gifts. As his grandfather said, If you needed these things that badly to lie like this, you must have been very desperate. Story 9. There's a story that goes around. I can't vouch for the truth of it or not. Call it an urban legend. First of all, if you've never been to a Jewish wedding, the way it goes is, first, they have the reception, with the bride and groom in separate rooms, then the ceremony, then family goes away to sit for pictures while the guests sit down to eat. Then the bride and groom come in and the dancing starts. In between the ceremony and the pictures, though, is what's called yichud, which doesn't really translate, but it approximately means isolation together. The bride and groom lock themselves in a room and are observed by two reliable witnesses outside the door to have stayed therein long enough to have consummated the marriage. Although nobody actually does it there, it's considered to class. This is what actually solemnizes the marriage. Well, one of three things. The other two are signing a marriage contract called a ketubah and transfer of a piece of chattel property, traditionally a ring, though it can be other things, from the groom to the bride. So, after the yichud, the bride comes out and announces, Sorry, everyone, the wedding's off. We'll be getting a divorce, and we're returning all the gifts. Um... Except for the bedroom set, where I caught my new husband trying it out with my sister last week. So? There are far worse stories here in this very thread. What makes this one noteworthy? Well, think about this. She knew about the episode before the wedding. Why'd she go through with it? Because under Jewish law, if you've once been married to a woman, even after divorcing her, you aren't allowed to marry her sister at any time until your first wife has passed away. By going through with the ceremony, she in effect locked her sister out of ever being able to get together with her soon-to-be ex. Story 10. One of my best friend's wedding was canceled when he learned she slept with a stripper after her bachelorette party. Like three days after, he is happily remarried now with a kid. Worst part was that it was a destination wedding honeymoon and he couldn't get a refund, so we all went anyway. And he was super depressed the whole time. His family was all there too. Story 11. I woke up on a Sunday and saw in the news that a bachelorette party had been burned alive after the limo caught fire by itself on a bridge towards San Francisco. It was the start of a cow day. Eat it. People are asking if I knew the victims. No, I don't know them, however, as a human. I can sympathize with women who passed away just before what was supposed to be the happiest day of the bride's life. This is an incredibly tragic story that could have been avoided had the limo driver pulled over and unlocked the doors. All we would have heard about this story if it were reported on is the story of how a car spontaneously combusted. Story 12. My friend had been with his fiance of eight years when she got pregnant. Fast forward eight months, and we decide that because they are basically common law married, we need to throw him a bachelor party. So we go to the nearest big city and he's abused by strippers, and we're all quite drunk when he gets the call that his fiance is in labor. None of us is in any state to drive. We end up calling a cab and paying over $300 to get him to the hospital as soon as possible. My friend is stumbled down drunk when he walks into the delivery room smelling like strippers with a banana drawn on his face and covered in glitter. I was positive that was the end. They've been married seven years and just had their second child last week. Story 13. Sister of the groom chatted with the sister of the bride. Just casual conversation, but it came to light that almost 100% of what the bride had said besides her name was a complete lie. Sister of the groom calls him up and says he really needs to figure out if this is right. A few fights and some long thinking later, the groom leaves her and leaves town. It got worse, though. Turns out pretty much all the bride's friends had been lied to as well. They all stopped talking to her. Edit. I replied below with some examples of the lies, but seems to have gotten lost in the thread. Pasting that answer here. Just the normal details of a person's life. Where she went to high school instead of a boring suburban school, it was an expensive private school. Claimed her family had a ton of money she was set to inherit. 
claimed they had a home in Hawaii, faked knowing people in the same industry, small to large, didn't really matter almost all of it was fake from what I heard. I didn't really know her, but we were at the same company. People I worked with used to work in her department, so I just heard most of it secondhand, and no idea how she thought this would work for the rest of her life. I honestly think she had a mental condition. From what I understand, she tried to rekindle the friendships, but quickly started to lie again, and that was it. She quit the company shortly after all this went down. Story 14. While the working the night before a wedding at a hotel, the staff and I heard a loud scream from upstairs. Cue the bride screaming and sobbing, shouting, The wedding's off! While storming out the place, followed by the groom Stark Bollock, covering his nether regions with his hands apologizing profusely. Turns out she caught the mother of the bride and the groom shagging. Safe to say we had an easy shift the next day as we didn't have a wedding to cater for. Story 15. Neighbor's friend's jealous harpy frenemies convinced her to cheat on the husband-to-be at the bachelorette party. Her friends were very drunk and Snapchatted evidence to him as a joke. Obviously, he didn't take it that well and left her. Packed up all his things in their apartment and drove to his parents instead of getting married. Bride apparently didn't leave her room for about three weeks. Totally distraught with how her relationship fell apart. Fast forward six months later, the two are talking again. Not sure if they are trying to make things work. Story 16. Best friend's bachelor party a few years ago. He had dated his fiance for six or seven years at that point. She made a male friend at work that became a groomsman. I hated him, didn't trust him, and told my buddy that. The night of the party, after huge amounts of alcohol, the groom breaks down crying, leaves, and walks home. Didn't say anything to anyone, just left. Found out the next day that the bride-to-be had been banging the piece of cow groomsman for months, and they were trying to work through it. He couldn't get past it and canceled the wedding. Story 17? In the early 90s, my friend's brother was getting married. The night before, the groom and best man decided they should terminate the ex-boyfriend of the bride. They did, they got caught, and the wedding was canceled, for obvious reasons. As far as I know, the two are still serving time. Story 18. A week before his wedding, a friend of mine walked in on his dad, having close relationship with his fiance. The next day, in a fit of rage, he trashed their room and, in the process, found explicit love letters between his recently married best friend and best man in her underwear drawer. The letters were as recent as the past week. The wedding was canceled. Whenever I ran into him at a bar, I made sure he never had to buy his own drinks. Edit one points of clarification. My friend Bob caught his fiancé having close relationship with his dad, Bob Sr. Bob then found love letters in his bedroom he shared with his fiancé, between his fiancé and his best friend best man, Steve. This happened around 2001 when people still hand-wrote things. The letters were explicit enough that it was obvious that Bob's fiancé and Steve had been having close relationship within the past week. I realize I used way too many pronouns in my original explanation, and some people were a little confused. Edit 2. Changed fiancé to the correct and gender specific. Fiancé. Sorry about that. Story 19. Buddy of mine was pretty worse for wear on his stag do. UK. We were trying to get him into a club and were giving him a pep talk to try and make him act sober in the queue as we were waiting. His fiancé wasn't a fan of him drinking, and my buddy always had to try and pretend he wasn't too drunk after a night out, so one of the boys said, Imagine your fiancé was here. Without missing a beat, he screams at the top of his lungs, Flipping worker! Definitely had my doubts about that one going ahead, though it did. Story 20. So, not as extreme as some of the others. Bachelorette party is three days before the destination wedding. My sister, the bride, is taken by her friends for a dinner. I'm at the bachelor party. We start getting weird messages. Garbled texts, and then we get a call from a local hospital. Food poisoning. The groom goes, Yeah, this isn't happening, boys. And we figure one more short, and we'll make our way to the hospital. Never underestimate the determination of a bride and bridesmaids. The wedding was delayed a day, to the Sunday, and she walked down the aisle with enough gravel shoved up her bum and into her veins that I'm not sure she knew where she was, let alone that it was a wedding. The bridesmaids were all various shades of gray, green, and ill. It was open bar, and to avoid spoiling the party, the husband and groomsmen stayed back and kept drinking. My sister was so tired, she and the bridesmaids took another dose of gravel and all went to sleep in their hotel room. My mother, who is a retired ICU nurse, went to take care of them. So, not as dire as others, but I bet there was nowhere near as much vomit and feces as the others. Story 21. Had a weekend of golf planned a couple weeks before the wedding as his bachelor party. His fiancé drops him and cancels the wedding. We all still went golfing and had a great time. Ended up being the first of our annual golf trips. We will be on our 10th next year. One of our buddies makes a giant scorecard for our trip and always has the title real big. Fiancé named Memorial Golf Tournament. Story 22. The day of the wedding, the bridesmaids discovered a bunch of candy and syringes in the bride's bag. Groom was pissed, called off the wedding an hour before it was set to happen. 
but still let us enjoy the food and bar that had already been paid for at the venue. He dodged a bullet and I got drunk for free. Win-win. Story 23. I've got a pretty good one. Not mine, but a friend of my wife. Destination wedding in South America. We live in the U.S. Because it was a destination wedding, they both had their bachelor bachelorette down there. Bride-to-be went looking for the groom the night before the wedding. No one knew where he was. Eventually found the dude locked in a bathroom with some local girl doing cola. Bride was obviously pissed, but they went through with the wedding. To a few years later, we randomly went out to dinner with just me and my wife with the bride. Turns out she never mailed in the wedding certificate. All this time they haven't been married. She said she had too many red flags to go through with it. Dude has no idea they aren't really married, even though they have been married for years and have two kids together. Story 24. I'm a musician. I work on an infamous street for drunken revelry and debauchery. One night, a bachelor party came in around the same time as a bachelorette party. The show I work with does special things like funny songs for special events, so I bring them both up at the same time to do something special. In the middle of this, on stage, they start making out. And they do not stop. I finish my routine as best I can and get them off stage. Later, as I'm looking around the audience, my eye catches on them again. They're in the back corner just going at it while their respective parties hang out up near the front of the stage. And they are really getting into it. Hands down pants and upskirts, at some point they disappear. I take a break and head to the restroom. It's locked. I hear a woman screaming from within, not moaning, not sighing. Screaming, fudge me harder! I sit in the lounge area outside the bathroom for about ten minutes. The bachelor and bachelorette come out, looking a bit disheveled, but not too bad. They see me and immediately want to chat. For some reason, people always want to get to know the musicians. There's curiously no guilt on them at all. I have to pour out the water like a racehorse, but this is too good to pass up. Come to find out, they both are getting married to other people, but know each other from having lived in the same small town of about 5,000 all their lives. They ran into each other for the first time since high school graduation at our bar, and old feelings emerged that neither had ever attempted to act on. They don't stay long. And as they leave, I hear the bachelor say, I have my own room. Let's go there. The rest of the party stays till the show is over. Partying hard and having fun. Possibly the best bachelor-bachelorette parties I've had. Usually bachelor parties get too drunk and bachelorette parties devolve into crying fits and arguments. Anywho, I wind up seeing the bachelor and bachelorette together at our bar and out in the street every night for four nights. Always holding hands and or getting frisky. They came back a little over a year later. They got married here in our town to each other instead of who they were engaged to that fateful night. Most of their respective bachelor bachelorette show up for the event. With this story, I always feel torn. Did I participate in the destruction of two relationships? Or did I facilitate the meeting of two soulmates? Edit. I thought I might eventually have to disclose what street it was, or that it would be obvious, but now I see there are so many. Edit 2. As many of you have guessed, and keep guessing, it is in fact Bourbon Street in New Orleans, Louisiana. I won't speak to the type of bar or the specific place. NOLA is a crazy enough place without adding Reddit stalkers. Story 25. My aunt was visiting me, and a friend's daughter was getting married that day nearby. My aunt wanted to drop by the reception to bring a wedding gift. It turned out the wedding had never taken place. It seems they got to the altar, he said, I do. And they asked her, do you take this man to be your wedded husband? And she said no, and walked out. The weird part is they were both at the reception, getting drunk with their friends. He looked really unhappy. She looked delirious. If I were him, I'd never want to be within a mile of her ever again after that. I don't know what her reasoning was. Maybe it was good but it was really incredibly rude of her to literally wait until the very last moment to break it off. Story 26. An ex-girlfriend was at a bachelorette party at a seedy male strip club. She came home from the party and said, well, the wedding is off. The bride was getting the usual treatment, sitting in a chair with strippers gyrating around her, whipping dongs around, and then one put whipped cream on his cock and invited her to lick it off, which she did with her tonsils until the stripper shoots his load all over the front of her I'm the bride t-shirt. About this moment, the bride kind of comes to her senses, looks around and sees like 20 of her friends pointing cell phones at her recording and taking photos and starts freaking out. My girlfriend says she started screaming at everyone, you better delete that cow, and generally having a full rage meltdown, which is apparently tough to take seriously when you're basted in stripper. This tale of modern romance closes very shortly later with the bride's phone ringing a call from her fiancé, who has already received photos from her frames of his bride to be with a cock stuffed in her mouth. Story 27. Obligatory not me. I worked at a music venue in the Detroit area that was also a popular wedding reception location. Came into work one week in the fall, when pretty much every weekend is booked solid with weddings, 
and noticed Saturday was open, no one scheduled. Talk to the wedding planner, she tells me the groom canceled? Odd. Talk to wedding planner's younger brother, who was our head bar back. He tells me that the groom, excited for the wedding, left work at lunch on Friday, bought a nice bottle of wine, and headed home to surprise his bride-to-be. Except he was the one in for a surprise, as he walked into his new house to hear sounds coming from their bedroom. He walked in to find his bride in bed with another man, his dad. We tried to talk him into doing a big fudge you party because we'd never filled the space and there was no refund, but he declined. Edit. A lot of people are speculating where I worked. It was the Crowfoot Ballroom. If you haven't been, go see a show there. It's a phenomenal venue. Story 28. I had a very good friend in high school, a girl, who had their bachelor and bachelorette parties on the same night. They got back to their hotel room, got into a huge argument. He beat the nonsense out of her so bad, he thought she was dead and went and drove his car into concrete road divider at 130 MP to terminate himself. It was crazy since I was at both parties during the night. She was really argumentative when drinking, and he was kind of crazy. I guess a recipe for disaster. I found out later there was a history of both of them beating each other. She's doing okay now. This was 10 years ago. She's married with two kids, and I'm still friends with her. She actually openly talks about it when asked. Story 29. Not me or anyone I know personally, but in Detroit, there's an AM radio show called Dave and Chuck the Bad Person. The show is pretty much what you expect, banana and fart jokes mostly. But they had a question to the listeners one morning on this exact topic. The story went that the caller had gotten super drunk at his bachelor party, and some of his groomsmen sodomized him with liquor bottles and took photos. The caller had even stated that he brought this up to his fiance, and she basically said, get over it and don't ruin my big day. Needless to say, having this info out on the Metro Detroit radio waves caused quite a backlash against the groomsmen and fiance, even ending in some kind of legal battle, if I recall. Anyway, the caller received very positive support from the community to it off with his fiance. There was even a trending hashtag on Twitter for a while after. Edit. A letter. Edit. Am is in the morning. Story 30. A friend of mine apparently came to the realization he never wanted to get married. After the bachelor party and the hangovers, he sat down and thought about it, then called his fiance and broke it off. Yeah, people were pissed, but he admitted he really didn't want to get married, and this was better than the divorce they were headed for. Story 31. As work-related case, we had this one accident. Bachelor Park Group were drinking heavily, and middle of the night, they get this great idea to try drive up skiing slopes during summertime. The slopes were very steep, and their car came down rolling for 80 meters down the slopes. Groom got taken to hospital by helicopter and spent his supposed-to-be wedding day in tubes. Story 32. I was at an engagement party of a long-time friend the other day. Everything was good until afterwards. As soon as we got back to their house, I was crashing at theirs, they had an argument, and she punched him in the face twice and said, If you tell anyone I did this, I'll say you're abusive and assaulted me. And then said, But if you leave me, I'll terminate myself. He said he was done with her, and she was supposed to be getting sectioned the next day. But she didn't, and somehow the wedding is still on. I'm supposed to be best man, but there's no way am I condoning the wedding in any form. That includes going to the thing. Edit. My plan is to get in his ear about this and try and stop him somehow. But it's hard to convince a victim of abuse that they're a victim. Hopefully, I can help him see the light before it's too late. Story 33. At one of my prior workplaces, a young lady, early 20s, was engaged to be married with her longtime boyfriend. Her and a group of close friends went to Vegas for a weekend, and she came back to work telling everyone how she decided to call off the engagement, as he wasn't the right one for her. On the side, she was also telling a few close co-workers about the 12 inches stranger cock she messed up a few times and enjoyed oh so much while in Vegas. At least she had the decency to call the engagement off. Story 34. Buddy's bachelor party. Bachelor got super wasted and the phobie was shocked and did not know the well-mannered, polite young man marrying his daughter was in his eyes a raging alcoholic. The bachelor got so drunk, he began to let some secrets slip about his relationship with the bride. The phobie was a bit old school in his thinking. The bachelor let the following slip. 1. His daughter was basically living with him since junior year of college and her apartment in college was for show for the faux bee. 2. Even though he is drinking a lot, his future wife can outdrink him too. 1. 3. His future wife has cute tattoo on her inner thigh, and that all his her friends had seen it when they went skinny dipping at the Fubs lake house. 4. We had a massive graduation party at his lake house when him and his wife were in Europe for two weeks. 5. The bride is into some kinky stuff. That drew the line. The faux bee declared there would not be a wedding. Where has he gone wrong raising his daughters? Then he said his life is F-saked. He has four daughters total, and this was his oldest and who he considered his best behave. Edit. Spelling error? They were married. Peer pressure. Story 35. 
not a party I attended, but not too long ago there was a story on the news about a bachelor party. It was a normal party from what I understand, but at some time during the evening, a bunch of guys roll up the bachelor in a rug and put him outside against the wall and leave him there. Just to mess with him, they go back out there a little while later and release him from the carpet. But to their surprise, they have left the bachelor upside down in the carpet, and he's now dead. Story 36. A stripper came to my buddy Jack's bachelor party and proceeded to put a condom on a dildo and bang herself in front of the crowd. It was awesome. At the end of the night, Jack, the groom-to-be, was cleaning up a bit and put the condom wrapper in his pocket absentmindedly. The next day, his fiancée, Kristen, was doing laundry and found the condom wrapper and freaked out thinking that he had cheated on her. Jack tried to reassure her and explain the situation, that the stripper had used it on herself. Kristen is a really cool lady and takes it pretty well and calms down, but she can't quite shake the feeling. So, Jack tells her to call me to confirm what happened. Kristen calls and asks, So what happened last night? Mind you, I'm totally in the dark about the situation, and Jack and I had never discussed what we are supposed to tell Kristen, so I totally downplay it. Not much. The boys just had a few beers and smoked some cigars. I hear you lying piece of cow click circumflex oops. Story 37. Was at a bachelor party in Vegas. The bachelor went a little overboard on everything and ended up running off with a prostitute. When he got back, no one said anything. Then he ordered another prostitute and locked himself in his room. The next day, his fiance brother one shot at him and left him unconscious on the ground. The party was over, but he stayed and continued doing candy and prostitutes. The wedding was off. Story 38. A guy I somewhat knew from working on a site, construction, ended up getting drunk at a bachelor party and driving a side-by-side, -side, basically overpowered off-road go-kart golf cart things. He ended up rolling it and not only paralyzing the groom, but also terminating the best man. He's facing a lot of charges and it basically crushed his entire self. He wasn't a bad guy or anything, just made one stupid decision that ruined three lives for good. Story 39. My cousin was a young, newly minted U.S. Marine, and was set to marry some girl he met at a gas station near base. She had no job, no real aspirations, and seemed only interested in his benefits. But she was putting out, and he was happy. Nobody in the family wanted this to happen, but we were all afraid to push to hard and risk alienating him. So we all, including his parents, just went along with it figuring that it would fizzle out well before the wedding date. Well, that didn't happen until the actual day of the wedding. On the morning of the wedding, she informs him that her best friend will be coming to live with them for the first year in order to help her acclimate to living on her own. He tells her that there is no way that this can happen because he lives in base housing and there are strict rules against it. Apparently, this was a deal breaker and she backed out with not too much protest from him. We later found out that he had been having misgivings but was too chicken cow to call it off himself. The reception was bought and paid for already and my cousin's family were all very relieved that the wedding was off. So anyone who felt like sticking around after the non-ceremony had a cow kicking time. Even though the non-bride's family weren't there, I think we still drank almost all of the booze. Story 40. On man, so I have a good story. Night before the wedding, rehearsal dinner is at a distillery. Everyone gets hammered. I mean everyone, even the grandparents, all extremely intoxicated. The groom's dad was so drunk that when he tries to give his speech to the couple-to-be, he cannot even talk nor stand up. After the rehearsal dinner, the whole wedding party decides it is a good idea to go out drinking some more at some karaoke bar. At the bar, the, the groom's little sister, who was in high school at the time, randomly decides to get on stage to try her hand at drunken karaoke. However, instead of singing a song, she just starts talking about how she wants to fudge all the groomsmen. Promptly, her family rips her off stage and takes her home. Later in the night, everyone is having a great drunken time, but then the bride drunkenly tells the groom that she is not sure if she loves him anymore. The groom becomes enraged, leaves the bar, attempting to walk stumble back to his hotel, which wasn't anywhere near the bar. The groom's brother runs after him, trying to calm him down, and the groom ends up getting into a huge fist fight with his brother best man. The next day, the groom and best man look like they had both been hit by a truck. For some reason, the wedding is still on. The groom's mother decides the only way to fix things is by trying to cover the wounds with makeup. So now, you have the groom and best man looking like Casper the friendly ghost up on the altar, and then in walks the bride, drunk off her peach. They end up both saying, I do. But weeks later, as expected, they get divorced. Ends up that before the wedding, while the groom was on his bachelor party weekend, they met a bunch of girls who were going to the same place for a bachelorette party. The groom hooks up with one of the girls he meets. Long story short, now he is married to the girl who he cheated on his ex fiance wife with and has been for the past seven years. It is always funny to think back on how much of a cow show that wedding was. Story 41. This happened several years ago. My ex was the best man in a wedding for his best friend. 
The night of the bachelor bachelorette party, the men and women each had their own get together, and then were supposed to meet up with each other later that night at a bar downtown. I was with the ladies, and after our party, we got into the party bus and headed down. Bride called groom and told him to leave to meet us there. We waited and waited. Groom is a no show. Bride demands that I call my then boyfriend and find out where they were. Boyfriend reports that they made a pit stop at a strip club. Bride and groom had an agreement that he would not. Bride obviously flips out and grabs my phone demands that my ex order everyone to leave the club. Ex tries to explain that it is not going to be easy to get 40 highly intoxicated men out of the club when they had already started. Meanwhile, groom is still ignoring bride's calls. Bride demands that we all leave. Bride and groom's sister get into a physical altercation and have to be pulled apart. Bride is screaming that she is canceling the wedding. X and I hightailed it out of there as it had escalated into a two-family brawl. The next day, groom calls X and asks if we want to come over to watch movies with him and bride. They got married weeks later and are still married. Story 42. It was one of my sister's friends, so it's not firsthand, but her ex-husband crashed the bachelorette party and romanced her such that she bailed on the wedding and ran off with him. There's more to the story. You knew that was coming, right? Her ex had served a one-year sentence for beating her so badly in front of witnesses that she had to get reconstructive surgery on her face, shattered cheekbone, among other injuries. They remarried but eventually divorced a couple years and a child later when he started reverting to his previous behavior. Story 43. Friend knocked up his girlfriend. They weren't planning on getting married, but friend's dad is a pastor and pretty much forced them to get married ASAP. Wedding and bachelor parties were quickly planned. Week after the bachelor party, week before the wedding, his fiancée had a miscarriage. Since this was pretty much the only reason they were getting married, they called it off. Story 44. Buddy of mine was getting married. We went out for drinks. His wife did not permit him to have a bachelor party. We drank and he told me about the abuse and how she masked it all as BDSM play, Dom Sub Lifestyle. The wedding was two weeks away, only he hated it and only did it because he had low self-esteem. She was really aggressive. She had come on to me the year before and I said no. She went so far as to wake me up by sitting on me on the couch when I crashed once at their place. I was drunk, still thought I was dreaming at first, but came to my senses before anything terrible happened. I told him about it later, but he chalked it up as just her dom personality. He didn't seem to care, even though I knew better. Anyway, we come home from the bar and sit in the living room and watch TV. I'm not really that drunk, but tired, so I fall asleep for a bit in a chair watching an old MacGyver rerun. He goes off to his fiance, and I assume they are having kinky, close relationship or something. About 30 minutes later, I wake up to my buddy putting stuff in a backpack. He says he's going to go to a hotel. He cannot stay here with her anymore. Says he will drop me home. That's when she comes out in full crotch less leather dom gear with some guy on a leash. Starts yelling at him and doing some fairly familiar dom commands. He isn't having any of it and leaves while yelling at her for cheating and also leaving me there. Then she yells at me for not trying to stop him. I just say, you are the one with handcuffs. And I walked home. The wedding was canceled by him and she spent the next month saying cow about how he was intolerant of her lifestyle over my space. Yeah, I am old. All I cared about was my buddy getting out of an abusive relationship. He is now married to one of the best women I know. So, a happy ending. Edit. She got involved with this other sub and eventually married him. He actually used to hang with us at our favorite bar a lot, but he was not a friend. She made him start wearing a male chastity piece, so he would not cheat or touch himself while she was not there. We called him Banana Cage from that point on, mostly because my buddy was a bit raw from the whole deal, and we wanted to support him. She was really beyond abusive with him, stuff I don't want to get into here. We will say it was bad and not your healthy BDSM. Different strokes for different folks. Story 45. Sort of related, an old friend ended up marrying his cousin's ex-girlfriend. Ironically, the best man had also slept with her. During the wedding, one of the guests who was aware of everything that went on turns to me and says, three people on that altar banged the bride. I'm just saying. Story 46. Not technically on post, but maybe close enough. My mom had a female tenant, engaged to a local guy whom I kind of knew. She's in an out-of-town bar one night, meets a girl, starts talking. Conversation turns to their fiancés. How weird. They're so similar, like the same stuff. Drive the same car, same ethnicity. BTW, what's his name? Enter, oh cow moment. This dude was engaged to two girls, both for over two years. They started comparing he was at my family's on Christmas Eve. Oh, mine was Christmas Day and so on. Girl calls him up from bar. Invites him down to meet long-lost friend. Hilarity ensues. Two weddings are off. Story 47. Went to Buddy's bachelor party of four, actually. Typical night of drinking downtown and hitting up all the bars we frequented in college. Two of us are single and we get separated chasing girls. Get home the next morning to find the bachelor party attendees at my house. The bachelor is in the shower. I ask the best man how the night went. 
He says he and the bachelor took a random chick back to his cousin's place. They didn't have a plan with her, but one thing led to another, and the best man is nailing her while the bachelor watches. He tells us, bachelor was just sitting there, so I told her, you suck that banana, and she did. They had a crazy three-way, and the cousin's wife found out, was pissed because it took place in her kid's playroom, and she told the bachelorette. Wedding off? Best grossest part was that the bachelor was in the shower because the best man pulled out and his load on his arm. Story 48. Bachelor party in Vegas. We had asked the bride-to-be if the groom was allowed to go to a strip club, and she said yes. We go to the strip club, and when she finds out she freaks, says the wedding is off, and then starts an entirely false rumor that one of the groomsmen, who is also engaged, got a handy from a stripper. Then the fiancé of the groomsman, who didn't get a handy, starts a rumor that the bachelor actually got a handy from the stripper. This all goes down on the Saturday of the bachelor party. Kind of put a cloud over the party for a while, since half of the guys spend the whole day on the phone with their women back home putting rumors down. Meanwhile, the single guys are getting very drunk watching this train wreck. By Sunday morning, it was all straightened out, and everyone ended up married and happy. But it was an obnoxious thing to have to deal with. Oh, and there were no handies, but one guy paid $500 for a beach with a condom on. It was weird. Story 49. Not exactly on topic, but I want to share. This ex-friend of mine, who has a daughter with another woman, was on his wedding reception with his new wife dancing. She says he should forget about his daughter. He thinks she may be kidding and forgets about it. Later on, she tells him again to forget about his daughter because she can give him as many kids as he wants. He gets super angry. Tells everyone to get the fudge off. Party is over. The bride doesn't know what the fudge happened, but he is already gone. He goes to see the bride a week after just to return the ring the bride's family gave him. He never spoke to her again, so she gave up, and a year later, she sent him the divorce papers for him to sign. He didn't ask for divorce first because he was and still is broke as fudge. Story 50. The bride to be tried to jerk me off under the table during the pre-party, then when we were leaving, she was trying to jerk me and someone else off in the back seat. This guy wanted it. I basically wrapped her peach up to keep her hands. Then I took her home and tried to get her to go to bed. She tried to get me to fudge her telling me he wouldn't know about it. This was my best friend. I'd know about it. I told him a couple days later as to not ruin all of the plans, but early enough to save his peach. Edit. Oh, he terminated himself within the year after tons of therapy and calling me high as fudge in a complete mess over this. That unpleasant didn't seem to care. About a year after that, she started hitting me up on Facebook trying to get me to meet up and have a fling. I did not. Story 51. How about the father of the bride? Happily married with kids, sleeping with the maid of honor the night before the big day. Yup, that didn't go over to well with the bride. Even better, this is how it went down. The bride walked in on them banging boots. Big fight ensued, yada yada. Then the maid of honor spills the beans that the groom also had slept with her. A few months before. Yeah, none of that went over well at all. Story 52. Not a bachelor at party, but before the groom's dinner. Groom's party got drunk and crashed their speedboat into father of the bride's pontoon, who was also drunk. Groom and brother of the groom passed away. Best man, best friend of the groom and driver, of said speedboat lived. Him and the father of the bride went to prison for manslaughter. Wedding canceled. Don't drink in boat, folks. Story 53. On weekends, I work at a place that hosts quite a few weddings. At about 2 p.m., our in-house event planner came back downstairs looking really uncomfortable and asked if anyone else would go back up to the dressing room area with him. Turns out he rounded a corner to find the groom sobbing uncontrollably being consoled by the bride's mother, who kept saying, It's not too late. You don't have to do this. This was all made even more uncomfortable by the fact that the bride was pregnant. Wedding went off without a hitch, and staff reported that the couple looked very happy once the trigger was pulled. Story 54. Distant cousin's wedding. Drunk would-be groom and friends were shooting off guns, and he somehow managed to basically tear his thumb off. Friends drove him to the hospital and were dumb enough to tell them the doctor the injury was gun-related. The guy who drove got arrested for DWI and two others got busted for dip. Good times. Eddie Dippy equal sign. Drunk in public. Story 55. Super late to the party, but a friend from college had his fiance bail on the engagement after she found out he rhino messed up a stripper at his bachelor party. For those unaware, this means he strapped a dildo to his forehead and messed up the stripper as if he was a rhino and the dildo was his horn. Story 56. I had a buddy whose fiance slept with a male stripper at her bachelorette party. He found out but wasn't totally irate about it. They had a pretty open relationship and flirted all the time with other people. Anyways, a couple days before their wedding, he got drunk and slept with one of his fiancé's friends. He told her what he did, and they both basically said truce and got married. Eight years later, they're happy with two kids. It's weird, though. 
because the friend that he banged still hangs out with all of us. No one really talks about it. True story, man. Story 57. Met up with a bachelorette party in Putin Bay during Christmas in July. Turns out the bride-to-be liked being DP'd and she used her phone to document the action. I learned this was going on while one of her bridesmaids and I were off doing our thing. I kept in touch with her for a few months, and she told me the freshly minted husband needed to use the bride's phone to take some pics during their reception. He didn't expect to see her grinning ear to ear while two cocks were in her. The reception didn't end well was my understanding, and the annulment was done the next day. Story 58. Party the night before the wedding groom and groom's friends, bride and bride's friends. Rent a cabin at a cool little state park for the party. We are all sitting at a picnic table, drinking, talking, nothing wild. Groom is stabbing a pocket knife into the picnic tabletop. Not hard, just sticking it in the wood. Bride-to-be says, If you keep doing that, you're going to your finger off. Groom replies, No, it's a lock blade. It won't close. Next stab lock blade closes. Cuts his pinky off. Rush to hospital. Pinky and cooler. Have to hold groom up at altar the next day due to pain. Pinky reattached. Everything eventually cool. Story 59. Two different weddings. In one, the entire bridal party got arrested for public urination, public intoxication, resisting arrest, and assaulting an officer. Us groomsmen were passed out, and nobody answered the phones or was able to pay bail. They later split up because she was so mad that he apparently drunkenly picked up the phone, threw it across he room, and landed it in the filled tub where another friend was passed out. The second time was after the groom and best man got a hooker and decided to double-team her. Bride walked in the next day to see the groom. Some pretty ugly hooker and his best friend passed out in the bed.